G'day, so we're further exploring the post-consumer transitioning. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to look at the spiritual disease uh, that we are beholden to and how um, if we are subject to, to a spiritual disease, how we get paras- um, parasites as a result of that disease so if you're familiar with say the way our plants when plants become diseased that it enables all these um say uh uh, pests to attack the plant because it's not strong and so you usually find that plants that have don't have you know that aren't strong or healthy become susceptible to to like to to pests and so are we in this manner similar in the sense that if we undermine our virility, let's say, or our health, but by being compromised, by not having any existential integrity because we are beholden to a spiritual disease that is a few thousand, a thousand, a few thousand years in the making, um, and yet uh, we get parasited, so we get this class of people that we actually allow to, we, we play host to, Okay, because the the spiritual disease allows it. Is this a good way to understand um, what we're beholden to? And so therefore to understand that all the palaver that's occurring on the planet now with this overt authoritarianism, you know, the the, the kind of rise of, of this 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 kind of I mean if you've got Communist China on the one hand, which is obviously totalitarian as a one-state party. You've got the US, which is an imperial kind of formation, which is essentially as a corporatist um, party. And literally every kind of nation-state in inverted commas that are a vassal of the US uh, have have a, this kind of paradigm of technocracy. And so therefore it's beholden to a, a world view or a, so literally it's beholden to a spiritual disease, but then it gives rise to these parasites to then live off us in such a way. So is what's occurring now on the planet bringing all this shit to the to the fore in such a way that it that we that we can a if we address our spiritual disease, we're going to address these parasites and so they remove these fucks. Okay, so warmongering fucks that basically just do not give a shit about anybody except themselves and their own position. Okay, so if we are cre- if we create a niche, all right, then the, a niche or a, allows a position for a person to basically nurture themselves on, to feed themselves on, but they are sucking the life out of out of its host. So if we are plants and we're diseased, then as a result of that, we allow that. Right, we're ultimately responsible. This is the thing. We are the ones that create the world as, as much as a, as a disavow of responsibility on our part. So when you're looking at uh, the spiritual disease, a disease, this is why we haven't even got close to actually addressing anything on, on the planet when people do not understand what their their actions, their ac- our actions are a language, okay? So our actions, are la- uh, uh, they speak more than our words can ever speak. So if we, the only thing that we have to do is just look at our actions and that will give an indication of the story, of the story, the narrative that we are sold on. All right, and we, when I say the narrative that we are sold on, we are literally sold it. All right, so we are sold not to see a, the spiritual disease that we are infected with, and that allows that parasites to exist. <clears throat> so, what is what's the spiritual disease? Well, you got to think that is time, and I always talk about the same thing because it's the only thing I do fucking talk about, and I always say that is time of value, or is it not? What is time? What is it? Now, we know that we live, we live, and that's what we, we're immortal, we pass. All right, so that's our understanding. Our understanding is time is an intensive experience. It's an existential. All right, so when it's an existential, it's not, it's got nothing to do with the way how that we describe time, okay? When you think about it, you know, you're not, you can't describe time as clock time. That's a derivative understanding of time. We are, we, and we would all, we, we would say, well, it's a form of many, uh, measurement. And, and it's a, it's so therefore, if it's, if you are measuring a periodicity, so between a, a before and then an after, that gives you an indication. And we can say, yeah, but that, that before and after is in reference to what? 
well, it's got to do with our action, right? So once again, it comes down to the the fact that our actions are are the language, and so and we create the story of of the planet. So the planet now is just explicit authoritarian or existential totalitarianism and it's existential totalitarian because if there's a claim that's made on the existential of time and we acquit ourselves of that claim and so we conflate the equivalence with with the truth with a truth it's a claim that we acquit ourselves of so it's a transcendentalism that's literally been immunitized so when you think of a transcendentalism the origin of it is thousands of years in the making because in that in that context we can say that that how understanding of our ancestors if you go back thousands of years ago and the way how they kept time if they're looking at the movements of the stars was maybe the the precursors uh, to understanding uh, time and but then you had the way how that you would still measure it so you, even if you're measuring time through the great ages so the platonic year over 25,000 years that's still a time measurement that time measurement is still derivative okay it's because it's not an existential it's still timekeeping but they used the stars or they used you know the movements of the heavens in order to have an orientation towards that now usually and you think about that from like the thousands and thousands of years that this has been um, kind of inculcated into our spiritualities. You know, astrology, if you're looking at it, astrology is timekeeping. And so if you understand it as being, say, like a science of the soul, because it's in reference to the to the sun and the way how everything kind of moves and stuff, it, that, that that's thousands of years in the making that actually habitualizes our thought pattern that we are not even are really aware of we don't think that we're we're astrologically kind of driven in our modernity in any way because people's understanding of what astrology is is found in a newspaper or in some kind of horoscope and so what you've got you've got you've got the bastardization of of this timekeeping that goes back absolutely thousands of years but if that timekeeping was a way that 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 was an orientation towards time as a clock time and then so the way how sundials were used, we can say, and then eventually the way how it become mechanized through a clock, and then the way how it eventually became a, a unit of account as an economic good, you have a progression that's over thousands of years. Now, do we, if we look at the way how that we act now, and that we're quitting ourselves of a claim that's been made on time because we attribute a value to it, the value that we attribute to it is inextricably connected to the spirituality over those thousands of years, and we won't recognize it. All right, so if you think that because value... <coughs> is an intangible it's a it's a it's like a spirituality it's based upon a spirituality because to attribute value to something that's ultimately not true to evaluate to attribute value to time is to, to destroy as i say the existential integrity because of the equivalence that we make and because we can only acquit ourselves of it but if we can only acquit ourselves of it we produce the form of life that is marginally given so if our whole act if our actions are orientated in such a way that we're beholden to a spiritual disease and people just are not aware that they are diseased when that we are a diseased species all right, and the reason why we can say we're diseased is because, as I say, that if we create a form of life, the person is always supplementary to the form because the paradigm is in reference to the claim that we acquit ourselves of. All right? And so, in that way, what what does marginality? You know, if you're looking at utility or disutility and ends a mean, you know, a work life balance, a work life, the margin of what you do enables the absencing, which enables a, a niches to be in the absencing because there, what happens is that if there's been an Archimedean point that's been immunitized in our lives that allows a leveraging, then within the gap, that, so the gap in our existential arbitrage, which is for our entire life, all right, because if we're, we're on a buyer's journey, that means we're constantly sold on the way how life is given. So arbitrage is the way how you simultaneously buy and sell. All right, and, you know, financial arbitrage is to look at the gap. So the difference between the value to see the opportunity to buy in one market and to sell in another. 
And existential arbitrage is completely different. This is the nature of our existential totalitarianism when you realize that the gap is your entire life because you're absencing yourself. And this is why I say that our actions, rather than that, that we sell them as being purposeful, are in reference to the marginality of our time. And so therefore, through our absencing, the way how we seek a return for our absencing, we expiate life from life. All right. Now, nobody recognizes that how entire way of life, our actions expiate life from life. Now, if what that's, that's doing is expiating life from life, what's, what's in its, what, what do we actualize? So what do we immunitize? We immunitize death. We immunitize the merchants of death, all right? in, literally in the gap. We won't recognize that we play host. We play host to a spiritual disease that allows warmongering fucks to kill people on this planet that we are responsible for. All right. We, we don't take responsible, what, what responsibility for that. And the reason why is because we don't credit ourselves with it as much. Because why? Because of the nature of the way how time is given to us. If we equivocate time with a value, and we acquit ourselves of that claim, we make it true. But in so doing, we make true the realm of death that we are beholden to. Now, if you are in your everydayness, you'll say, "Well, I'm not beholden to the, you know, to the the realm of death, you know." But then think about it with the imperialism that, that that's beholden on the planet, and look at U.S. imperialism and and the way how that they go that the U.S. goes around and basically will justify warmongering and kill like me like over a million people in in Iraq i mean countless basically places around the planet all right that are just just killed all right so there's there's the orange just because you are the beneficiary of the imperialism because you're closer western countries and in inverted commas are closer to the the centers of power you don't get you're not subject to the 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 um the uh, the the violence basically that exists and that immunitizes the death realm but we are but but we can get an indication of death by the way how that we're marginally given the way how that we're spectral and this is why you can always look at the difference between modern people and compared to tribal people they always say that that uh, tribal people don't have any faith because their whole body is their face in this way. There's lots that have been written about the nature of the, the publicness, obviously, of a tribal people. Now, obviously, tribalism is in reference to still to the um, to the issue of violence. So if you look at René Girard and you're looking at the, the cultural formation and in the way how the sacred comes about, you can understand that tribalism, when you're looking at it from, the, uh, from it being very much localised, is extremely problematic. Uh, as I as I always say that when you're looking at the form of life that is transcendent to the peoples that that are on the planet, the form of life determine is is a thing that you need to address in order to retribe a tribe. But that's the that's the the tribe of the first earthling. So it's made up of every single all the different peoples on the face of the planet. That form of globalism, in inverted commas, is not the globalism that we're, we are we are dealing with now, now. That is basically an imperialism that comes from the Mediterranean basin. So you have to look at what's gone on right around the globe, because if the West has been been the the vehicle for the Mediterranean uh, basin's uh, understanding of civilization, that's gone right around the globe. So what we have is what we have basically civilization as in the globalized civilization because it doesn't matter whether or not it's china russia or anywhere else you still got the same the same economic system all right and that is ultimately come out of the mediterranean basin we could say so what 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 is given as civilization for the planet all right think about the nature of what is that civilization it's 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 a civilization that's based upon a spiritual disease because you attribute value to time and you rely on parasites. So a caste, a caste. So you're thinking of the caste. The caste are the ones that will dislike to... What, what does a caste of managers do? They just pull levers. But what's a lever in reference to? Well, a lever is in reference to the leveraging that you can achieve when you pull the fucking lever. So how is that lever actualized in your life? It's through the work-life balance it's through the acquittal that you make. People fucking dis... And so, so if you... So this is why the use of money is not neutral. 
It's a there's a cost associated with it because it, you substantiate a spirituality of independence that that means to say that you're marginally given to life because you're orientated towards a return rather than being indivisibly orientated towards life and so orientated towards a love of what you do where you do not need to be compensated. You are compensating for the lack of culture this civilization has an endowed for the entire planet. All right, so a spiritual disease is the foundation. Is, is, the, is the actual thing that nurtures these parasites. But we, so then we play host to a spiritual disease and the parasites are parasiting our lives. So how do you remove these fucking parasites? Well, it's got nothing to do with addressing the parasites. So think about the way how people would address parasites if you're looking at the political realm, the difference between the right and the left. Well, you're still dealing, you're dealing with a cast of technocracy. or You're still, irrespective of who's in the, the White House, who's in Parliament, wherever it is, where all the, the way how democracy gets, democracy gets sold, you still got the managerial cast. You still got fucking bureaucracy or technocracy. You still got it there. So think of that. So it doesn't matter what you do as far as who you vote for. You're trying to address the parasite by changing the representatives of them. I mean, how is that even remotely fucking feasible, even make sense? So the issue is always, it's always a spiritual question. It's always an individual question that you pose to yourself. But through you posing it as an individual question, you realize that you are not unique. You are not singular. You are individualized You're because you're on a bias journey. A bias journey is a life that's been set. And all the niches are catered for because to, the lifetime value of a consumer is to consume your time to no end. You're not potentializing it beyond the economic a good, so the means utilized to produce that form of life. And so therefore you will be sold on your individualism. And this is what the West does, in inverted commas, it sells it. It has to sell that because it, there's none exists there. No, but no, nobody's orientated towards life singularly without, without quitting themselves of a claim. So if you're orientated towards addressing the spiritual disease spirituality is a is a is is given as a people all right it's not it might be the individual question that you pose to yourself the circumstance in the world allows but ultimately the spirituality is what you would share with other people okay so think of that if you share that with other people then you and you're looking at what's ennobling to ennoble you to ennoble somebody else all right, through your actions, through the actions. Actions speak louder than words. So if their actions are the language, then ultimately you have to understand what is the fucking story that you're telling yourself. What is it? Do you want? Are you sold on that story anymore? Or is there something that is more ennobling of what it means to be as a human being and to do justice to being born? Because how can you? How can our spirituality do justice being born when you have to acquit yourself of a claim that's made on time? So justify being born through the value proposition of your life. And if the value proposition is in reference to the agency that the form allows, well, then you're sold on your want. And so it can be the want of identity. You know, so you, whether or not you use sexuality as a vehicle for that, it's, you're still a consumer. You're consuming yourself on the narratives. Intersectionality is just about what, what is intersectionality when you're looking at everybody who's on a fucking grid. The grieving culture is basically given because the purveyors of history, which is the white man, is now the model. This is the thing about that. It's the model. It's the model for sovereignty. So that's why you have to, that's why there's resentment built into that inter intersectionality. And so therefore, as marginal as what you can be, is always invade against basically the white male, all right? Because ultimately, you, that's what you seek. You seek to be the, the one that's considered to be the, the author of history. And so therefore, it's a white fucking male. But a white male, it's like if you're looking at who, who are the authors of in, um, history, it's like usually it's warmongering fucks. If we're looking at what vi the violence is that's endemic on the planet, you know, it's not people. It's not a, like a, you know, a farmer out in the fucking field busting his fucking nut or whatever the case may be. It's no nothing like that. But the way how it gets sold, but you think of the, the marginality of your time. If you're looking at, well, what's the injustice? It's not social justice. It's literally the fact that we attribute value to time and that is an injustice to life. You have no existential integrity. That's why people get sold on their virtue. 
because they don't have any in fucking integrity. So when you go and address a person, it's very plainly obvious that they have no integrity because they can't fucking argue. They're religious. The best way that you can understand this is, is even using the example of like whether or not men, women and all this shit, that men supposedly be, can be pregnant. The easy way that you can just ask is that, do you believe in the Immaculate Conception? And there was, well, they probably don't even know what the fuck that is. But if you, you understand what the Immaculate Conception is, that, that Mary immaculately conceived. Like, you know, Joseph didn't fucking have sex with her. She was like God. So how is that any different to a man becoming pregnant? And so that gives you an indication of the religiosity of, of the whole thing. But, but as opposed to Christianity and the understanding of that, there is ult- it's ultimately orientated towards transcendence or redemption. As that's part of the narrative. What is the redemption in reference to a man that become pregnant? What is what is the redemption? What what's the story? There is fucking none. There's none. All you have to do because all all of God is dogma. They've got a dogma without any form of transcendence. The dogma, for you to embody the dogma, is the transcendence because supposedly you embody the good. And so therefore that the virtue signaling of your good is enough. And so, but if you are addressed, if you are asking, they don't have any, any fucking integrity for the virtue that they hold themselves in because it's, once again, it's self-designation. What is self-designation other than, than having the agency of one and designating something that you think that you are? It's no different to a fucking wealthy person. No different. A person that thinks that, that their wealth makes, makes them a big person, a, a big man, let's say, is, what's that? If you're orientated towards your independence and you have to, and so therefore you have to show the, the way how that you are independent in reference to the sovereignty that you're credited with. Consumer sovereignty is just your preferences. So the only thing that you can do is disinhibit your want to buy shit to show that differentiation. But as a form of life of the consumer, you're exactly the fucking same. And yet people get sold on their bullshit that somehow if they're wealthy, they're, they're fucking different. And you only have to listen, speak to fucking wealthy people. They're so fucking stupid and they are so sold on their own bullshit that the difference of them as a person is reduced down to how much money they have. All right, just think of that. And then if you think, but what's that? Because, because if they're in the embodiment of that, they're advertising for a way of life. And so ultimately in that way, that our, our spirituality sanctions people like that. So that's why they're given credence. That's why, you know, the lifestyles of the rich and famous is sold. It's sold so you, you disinhibit a way of life. You're sold not to see the claim that you acquit yourself of, to realize that the, the orientation of your spirituality immunitizes a Archimedean point that can be actualized by the parasites that that, that start to populate the niches that you allow so you have to address the spiritual disease that you're beholden to if you address a spiritual disease uh, you're beholden to you 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 will eventually you your actions will change and so therefore the story that, that you're sold on is changing that means to so say you become indivisibly given orientated towards a love of what you do with other people that are orientated towards a love of what you do think of the nature of the culture that you allow that if every single person is doing what they love they and and to do it with love means to say that you're indivisibly given to what you do you do not need to be compensated for the lack of existential integrity that you have in what you do because you love you're not making up compensating for a, a lack of culture our civilization is beholden to now we we have not even got we have not even fucking getting close to this because nobody fucking talks about the spiritual disease in reference to a time with a value because people equivocate that. I always say that, that we're behind to an unavowed utopianism, so people are sold not to see the dystopian future that they create. But if it's getting actualized, it's only because we allow these parasites to actualize our aspirations. And we won't think of it that, that we aspire to a death realm. But our actions, when you expiate life from life, that is exactly what we're fucking doing. And so it's whether or not anybody can even fucking recognize that to then look at how do you go about changing that. And all my fucking shit that I just go on about constantly, it's just orientated towards that. How do you actually transition out of this fucking thing? right? How do you... And practical, uh, practicalities, Saturnian, if I'm going to use it. Saturn is eating its young at the moment. That's the paradigm. Saturn is also the embodiment of the outlier, all right, the, the, the hermit. 
the hermit that has wisdom through time. All right, so we don't. We only know Saturn as a as a as a as a fucking father figure that eats its young. We don't know Saturn as 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 the master of time, and the one that has wisdom. All right, and maybe that's the difference. So you know, people think Saturnian, they think Saturn. No, no, it's the signification of it. So if you're looking at that spiritual science of astrology, it comes right back to the the periodicity of of something or turns around the sun. So you've got to look at the... But then that's orientated towards an existential integrity. So you've got to remove the self-mythologizing. And that involves the, the mythologizing of the sun, the sun's movement. All right? And that means to so say there's more dynamism which given within life when you're ultimately looking at your actions. And ultimately, you know, you become evocative of the sun, the sun that gives its light. It's ultimately that symbol becomes something that is orientated towards... You can understand why there maybe this, the, uh, the ancients used it, but not in the context of which we find it now. We're so fucking marginally given. You know, we're not orientated towards exploring what it means to be or, or doing justice to being born. And so, you know, playing at a loving creation where we lovingly create because we're indivisibly given to, to life so we can do justice to being born. You know, do you think we're even getting close to that? Do you think where anybody's having a conversation of fucking about this? If you're listening to this, then that's the only thing that I hope that you fucking think about. But you're thinking, if you only think about it, well, fuck that, I've done nothing. It's what you do to actually change it. So if any of this shit fucking makes sense, just fucking contact me in some fucking way. Go to my website and send, be the first person to ever send a fucking email to me. Anyway, until next time, take care. And that's enterprise good, if, if you want. I never fucking say what it is. Cheers.